this is Chris. Welcome to my channel. Thanks for visiting. I have a request to uh, show some of the books that I've made and most of the books I've made are watercolor journals so I thought I would show this one that I made several years ago. It's hand bound with art paper. I don't remember exactly which paper. I often would just take a tablet that was handy and make a book. I have here one that I made recently that hasn't been covered yet. I just used some old uh, illustration board that I had scribbled on to get my pen working. But uh, this is the kind of method I use. I have a video on how I make it. It's uh, sewn on a loom and then the threads are uh, woven into the cover and then a cloth cover is put on. Here's a little tiny one that I made. This was with some art paper also. So I've made quite a few of these. This one was at a time when I was living in California and then moved to Nevada. So the inside has uh, end papers made out of wrapping paper but I thought that was appropriate because I wanted to paint flowers in this journal. I wanted to uh, learn to paint watercolor with just a pencil outline and then do all the dimension with the paint. So I called this Watercolor Studies. It has a ribbon bookmark. And so this first one is a passion flower and this grew in my yard and it has passion flower bud there and I uh, like to find quotes to put in imagination is the true magic carpet by Norman Vincent Peale I won't read all the quotes to you we'll just go through this kind of quickly here's the passion flower open I love the colors and the, the interesting ornate design of this flower. It's pretty amazing. And then here we have a dragonfly. I have him here on the leaf where he is camouflaged and then I got him to land on my pencil so I was able to see him better. Here are some juniper cones. Green ones and dried ones. Here are some miniature roses. Some black nightshade, the, um, the mature berries, the young berries, and the flowers. So it shows the three phases of the plant. And these are shown at 100% size. And these are shown at 75% size. I like to put uh, notations about it. This was a trip to Lake Tahoe. This is Kings Beach all the colorful bathing suits and umbrellas in the beautiful mountains and um, my cousin near lived not too far from there so I visited her and she had a garden full of wildflowers so she let me pick some and make a bouquet and then back home again in Southern California I uh, was taking weekend watercolor classes and we would go to different locations and this was at the Historical Society and they had it set up with old houses and they had a garden like people would have uh, in those in those times with a scarecrow and here's a trumpet flower this was at another uh, location we went to on with my class and some koi fish from that same location And then uh, Newport Beach, we went to the uh, on the beach and we did some painting from the beach. It was really fun. Every Saturday we would go out to some different location. And this is uh, at Newport Beach also. This was in Newport. This was a, um, a nature center with a little creek running through it and a little waterfall. And they had a sign that said, take only photographs, leave only footprints. I thought that was very good. I've heard it many times since. 
And here is a hibiscus at the Nature Center. I love to sit out and paint. This is the um, palette that I use right here. Here's uh, more hibiscus. And then here's a building at the um, Muckenthaler Cultural Center in Fullerton. One of the places we visited. This was in Long Beach. This was at my friend's house. She was raising rare breed chickens. And then I think this is a magnolia. Uh, it was huge. This is half the size of the original plant that I painted. I also took um, night classes and uh, at the local college and I would in the summertime when the days were long I would go a little bit early after work and I would look for something to paint because the grounds were very well landscaped. I think this is a New Zealand tea plant. I wasn't sure. Some wild uh, Johnny Jump Ups or pansies. Here's a eucalyptus. Here's an orchid that I was growing in my home. Here's a green orchid, which I thought was unusual. That was also growing in my home. Then I took a trip up to Northern California to visit a friend in Pleasant Hill. And uh, we went on a little hike and there was this miner's lettuce and it's, it was said that the 49er gold miners used to use this in their salads. But it was an interesting plant because the leaf grows all the way around the stem instead of growing off the stem. And then the flower comes up through the center. Here's some other little flowers that I found there in, on our hike in Pleasant Hill. and a wild pea, a wild sweet pea. And then this plant here, I wasn't sure what that was. They called this a beach pea. This also grows at my home in Nevada and they call it Nevada vetch. There's a lot of wild uh, sweet pea type plants all over the country. This is the Walker River in California. This is the view from my uncle's house that I was visiting in Nevada. Very rural. And here we're back home again and this is a cross section of the passion flower. I actually took an X-Acto knife and carefully cut the plant down the center so I could see what the inside looks like. And here are the little future seeds right in here. This was in Redlands, California, and this is an ore cart from the gold mining days. Here are some little wildflowers at the college campus again. The little ladybug right here. And then this is a lily. I'm not sure if it's a canna lily. I'm not real familiar with lilies. But here's the seed pods growing out, a detail of those. Here's a bromeliad that was growing in my uh, yard at home and blooming beautifully. And then this picture is the last picture um, that I painted in my backyard before moving to Nevada. And you can see Here's the fence with the bushes on it, and here's a bunch of telephone poles in the neighbor's house real close. I like painting uh, fabric hanging on lines like that. So then I moved to Nevada, northern Nevada, not far from Carson City. Here's some rabbit brush, which was blooming at the time I moved there, which is a beautiful bright yellow. It looks like sagebrush until it blooms, and then it then you recognize it as rabbit brush. And then here are some bachelor buttons that I grew in my garden. 
And then this is a view from the back of my house. And so compare that to the view from Southern California to my view in Nevada. Much more to my liking. More vistas, more painting opportunities. One of my neighbors was raising llamas at the time, and so I went down to his house below the bluff and stood at his fence line and took some photos and drew some llamas. Here's a little cat that adopted me. Well, actually, she adopted my cousin, but my cousin had already had three cats adopt her, so she asked if I would like this kitten. And uh, she was blind. You can see her eyes don't look normal. And she was blind, but she didn't, she didn't live very long. She only lived about six more months. She had some other birth defects, I guess. Here's a picture of my nephew when he came to visit. I haven't done a lot of uh, drawings of children, so I'm not that good at it. And my niece. And then here's the last painting for this book. This book lasted about 18 months. So here's a poinsettia plant that I had purchased at Christmas time. So it says, The End. I wanted to start a new book on the next new year. And so there's a few pages that I didn't use and a recipe for focaccia bread. So that's a little tour of uh, one of my watercolor books. This one was just watercolor with a pencil drawing to uh, get me started. I have other books. I have one that's just color pencil. I have one that's ink and watercolor. So if you're interested in seeing any of those, um, feel free to leave a comment below and subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you know when I post another video. So thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Have a creative day.